Hello, Animanian here, and today we're going to be doing a tutorial on how to import characters and 3D models from Dead by Daylight into Blender. And the final result we're going to be aiming for is this, uh, and also the final render like this. There is a Discord link in the video description, so please look in the video description and join this Discord. We're really happy to answer any questions or trouble that you have right here. This video has two tutorials. First is a short version for speed. The second is a long version for better explanations for those who want them. This is the short tutorial. Software prerequisites. Go to the three links in the description. Left click to download for your operating system. Stable Branch Master 280, right click Save Link As. Latest UE Shader Script.zip, right click Save Link As. Open Blender, Edit, Preferences, Add ons, Install, PSK PSA 280.py, Install, UE Shader Script.zip. Search PSK Enable, Search UE Shader Enable. Go to the Shading tab, press N. Press reset and update presets after every update of UE Shader script. Exporting meshes. Go into your file explorer, right click on umodel.zip, extract files. Open umodel.exe. We must now find our pack files for DBD or Dead by Daylight. If you have Dead by Daylight, go to Steam. I don't have Dead by Daylight installed. I will use this other game as an example. Click on COG. Browse local files, click on an empty space in the navigation bar. Control C, Control V. If you don't have Dead by Daylight, download the zip of the pack files in the description. Right click extract files in the same folder as U model. In U model, override game detection. Unreal Engine 4.25 for current patch. Game, characters, campers for survivors, and slashes for killers. So campers, Guam for Kate, models, Right click, open folder content, navigate, include meshes to see only uh, meshes. Control G to toggle specular highlight, page up for next object and page down for previous object. Control T to tag a mesh for export. When all wanted meshes are on screen, tools, export current object. Press O, in the Guam models folder, Select and export the base skeleton, underscore skeleton, underscore ref. Right click animation folder, export folder content. Importing mesh and skeleton. Open Blender, press A to select all objects. Delete to delete all objects. N, open properties panel. PSK, PSA, change the settings to mesh. Import everything except the hair and accessories. Change the setting to scale. Import the base skeleton. Select all meshes and select base skeleton last. Control P to parent with empty groups. Change the setting to all. Import all hair and other, other accessories. To hair and accessories, select skeleton of hair. Modifiers, child of. Base skeleton, choose joint head 01 or try other bones and see if they work. Press set inverse. Now we need to test if the skeleton is set up correctly. Select the base skeleton, import PSA. Choose the sit on log animation. Scroll through the timeline, the mesh looks fine. It is all working. Press control Z to undo. Create materials. Press N to show properties. Load UE shader shaders panel. Select DBD Pit Princess clothing preset as preset to load. Scroll down to add shader map to all materials. In the input box, select materials folder inside the character folder, Guam materials. Now select the exported game folder, which should be where you exported from U model. Press A to select all objects. Press add shader maps to all selected meshes. Now select DVD Pit Princess Skin as preset to load. Select Mesh and Material with Skin Areas. If you look at the Material Ball to the left in the Shading tab, and the name you can tell it is Skin. Scroll down to Add Shader Map to Multiple Materials. 
check which number material slot you want to change. It starts from zero. In this case, the only skin material is slot two. So put in a two. Press add shader map to multiple materials. Do the same with the head. This time it is material slot zero. Put in zero. Press add shader map to multiple materials. The final material for legs is tricky. The pants and the skin are in the same material. So what we will do is select the Pit Princess skin preset. Select only the legs mesh and press add shader map to all materials. Go to the shading tab, press A to select all nodes. Right click, copy. Add a new material slot. Add a new material and name it skin legs. Control V to paste. Select the Pit Princess clothing preset. Go to the Add Shader Map to Multiple Materials section. In the input box, put zero to change the first material to the clothing preset. Now press Add Shader Map to Multiple Materials. Select the legs mesh, press Tab, click on a vertex in the skin. Do not move your mouse and press L to select the entire linked area of the skin. Hold the shift key and select a vertex on the other leg. Do not move your mouse and press L to select the other leg as well. Select the skin legs material, press the assign button to assign the selected area to the skin legs material. This will separate the mesh into two areas with two different materials. We must now assign the hair mesh to the correct preset. So select the DBD Pit Princess hair preset. Select the hair mesh and press add shader maps to all selected meshes. If the material doesn't look right, change the overlapping texture priority to last to first and press add shader maps to all selected meshes again. Change to custom textures. This face, torso, and legs texture is not what we want. We want the Stargazer outfit, so we must manually export the textures. Go back to U Model, Game, Characters, Campers, Guam, Textures. Right click, open folder content. Make sure Navigate Include Meshes is disabled. Page up or page down for next and previous material. Search for the textures you want. The textures for the Stargazer cosmetic are in Outfit 101 uh, underscore 06 folder. Right click, export folder content. Back in Blender, change all the image textures with the image textures for the Stargazer outfit. Make sure everything except underscore BC is non-color. If you want to adjust the look of the materials, open Solo Material Panel. To solo a material, press Solo Active Material to make it easier to see the material. To turn off Solo Material, press Use Nodes for all materials. Lighting. Change Render Engine to Cycles. Change to Render Preview Mode. If you want an HDRI, download from HDRI Haven. Go to the Shading tab, World, Use Nodes. Shift A to add nodes. For HDRI, use Environment Texture and use this setup. Change rotation on Mapping node to rotate our HDRI. To move the camera, select the camera, View, Enable Camera to View. Press Ctrl Alt Numpad 0 to move camera to current view. Add area lights to adjust strength, distance and size. Backlights provide separation from the background. If you think the hair looks a little bit ladder-like, click on your hair mesh, go to the modifiers tab, add modifier, subdivision surface. Make sure in levels viewport it's two. To import an animation, select the base skeleton, import PSA. Compositing. Once you are satisfied with the position and strength of the lights, in render passes, enable denoising data and ambient occlusion. In world settings, change distance for ambient occlusion to 0.7 meters. Do not enable it. Then render, render image. Once the image has finished rendering, 
Go to the Compositing tab, Use Nodes, and use this setup. To find the Multiply node, get the Mix node and change it to Multiply. Change the Multiply node factor until you are satisfied with ambient occlusion in the combined pass. To save the composited image, Image, Save As. And you are done. This video has two tutorials. First is a short version for speed. The second is a long version for better explanations for those who want them. This is the long tutorial. Hello, Animanyan here, and today we're going to be doing a tutorial on how to import characters and 3D models from Dead by Daylight into Blender. And the final result we're going to be aiming for is this, uh, and also the final render like this. There is a Discord link in the video description, so please look in the video description and join this Discord. We're really happy to answer any questions or trouble that you have right here. Let's start off with the prerequisites. So the software prerequisites. So just type in new model first into Google and just click on that first link here. From there, just click on download and just click on whichever version you have for your operating system. Um, for your operating system. So I would download the Windows 32 version, but I've already downloaded it, uh, so I won't do it again. So next thing is you just want to type in PSK, PSA, uh, importer into Google. Remember, these uh, software prerequisite links will be in the video description. So you can just use that as well. So you just look in the video description, but yeah, so you wanna click on here, and from here, you want to scroll down on this page and until you see Stable Branch Master. Uh, right click on that 280 direct link, and that's for Blender 2.8 and above, and click on Save Link As. And you just want to save it wherever. Uh, I won't do it because I've already uh, saved it. Okay, and the final thing you want to do is you just want to, uh, you want to, you want to, Go to the link in the video description uh, because you won't be able to find this on Google. But this is a Blender plugin that I myself made. I spent like two months coding this um, or scripting this, I should say. Anyway, uh, just go here and go to the releases section here. So you want to uh, take the latest release, obviously. So here, so it would be uh, UE Shader Script V 1.0.8. And you want to just right click on UE Shader Script v1.0.8.zip. And you wanna click uh, Save Link As. And just save it wherever. And I won't do that because I've already saved it. Okay, so that's all done now. Now we just need to install the Blender plugins. So just open up a new Blender window and we're just gonna install those plugins right now. So just uh, any general is fine. And you just wanna to go to the Edit preferences and into the add-ons tab and now you want to click on that install button on the top right so from here we just want to go to um, wherever you downloaded the the plugins so the psk and the ue shader script so first things first we want to uh, click on the io import scene.py and just click on install add-on i won't do that because uh, i've already installed it the next thing you want to do is just want to click on install again and where, navigate to wherever you downloaded it and you want to click on UE Shader Script v1.0.8.zip and press install add-on again. Again I've done that so I won't do it again. But from here you just want to make sure that the plugins are enabled. So you want to type in PSK and you should see this uh, plugin right here. So you want to uh, click on the left box, make sure that it's enabled. The import export uh, add-on is enabled. And you want to click uh, type in UE space shader and make sure that this one is enabled as well. Make sure that these two check boxes are enabled. Okay, so now that we have uh, installed the plugins, you should go to the shading layout space and just uh, make this window a little bit larger. Press the N key and then uh, Go to reveal this menu and then press save UE shaders and then just go down here, expand this window a little bit and always press reset and update uh, shade default, default presets. After every time you get a new update of UE shader script, right? So always remember, go to the shading tab, 
press N, go to save UE shaders, press reset and update default presets. So this will reset and update the default presets that come in, come with the plugin. And do that after every update. And then you will have installed all the plugins required uh, for this. You can close Blender. Now we want to do one more thing, which is to find where our pack files are. So first things first is you wanna open Steam and you wanna to go to library and you want to click on Dead by Daylight. From here, you'll click on the cog icon and you click on manage and browse local files. So um, obviously I don't have Daylight, Dead by Daylight installed, um, but <laughs> that's what you do. You'd find yourself in a content folder and inside that content folder, you wanna go inside and you'll find a packs, a packs uh, folder as well. Okay, so uh, you'll find something like this. So you'll find some folders uh, with packs like this. If you don't own Dead by Daylight, do not worry. I have also made a uh, Google Drive link to all the pack files. You can download that and just place it next to you model. But if you do have Dead by Daylight, here's what I suggest you do. So once you've found that packs file, just copy all the pack folders uh, in the same folder as where you model was, okay? So in the same folder, folder as where you model was. As you can see, you model is right here and the pack files uh, are right here, okay? So just make sure to do that um, because it'll make it much more convenient if you have the space. So anyway, uh, that's all done. So that's all the prerequisites. Now it's time to export all the characters and 3D, 3D models from the pack files because the pack files store the 3D models of all the characters, the textures and everything. So let's do that. So uh, you, you should have umodel.zip uh, or whatever and you should right click on it and press extract here. Okay, and then you would have these files here, umodel.exe and whatever. So you just want to double click on umodel.exe. From here, so this is the crucial part. If you're still just using the Steam files, here's what you wanna do. So I'm, this is not Dead by Daylight, but I'm gonna pretend it's Dead by Daylight, okay? So I'm gonna browse local files, and I'm just gonna pretend that maybe this is the PAX folder, okay? It's not the PAX folder, I know, but here's what I would do. I would click on the, the top bar, an empty space in this top bar here. The top uh, middle bar, empty space, and as you can see, I highlighted this. Now you wanna press Control C to copy, and you wanna go back to U-Model here. I'll just close that other U-Model window. Um, you wanna to go to this U-Model window, and you wanna press Control A to select everything, and Control V to paste over it. So you should, so if you're using the Steam files, that's how you do it. Um, however, I am not using the Steam files, so what I would do is just click on these three dots, and I would navigate, to uh, where the pack files are, and I would press select folder. So I also suggest making a backup because it's uh, a behavior may update the pack files at any time, and it's good to have a backup. So press override game detection, and uh, click on Unreal Engine 4, and as of the latest update, 4.7.2, use Unreal Engine 4.25. Okay, so that's all done, just press OK. Okay, so from here, we just need to find where are the characters. So the characters are under the game folder, under the characters folder here. And as you can see, there's a left arrow. So you wanna click on that to open up that dropdown. Now the campers uh, folder here are the survivors, where the survivors are located uh, in Dead by Daylight. And the slashes are where the killers, um, 3D models and textures are located. So we just want to find in this per in this case, um, uh, campers and Guam for Kate. If you want to find uh, the code names in the game files uh, for what everything is, just go to the helpful tips channel in the discord and you'll find the very first comment here. It's the very first pinned comment as well is um, where to, f what the code names are in the files. So as we can see here, if we just look at what Guam is, if we look at where uh, Kate is Guam, as you can see here, it corresponds right there. 
So yeah, so we're just going to open that Guam folder and I'm just going to open it again and I'm going to look for the, I'm going to click on the models folder here. So from here, I'm just going to right click on this model fo folder and open folder content. So this will open all the 3D models. From here, just make sure to click on this navigate, include meshes. Actually, I'll show you what happens if you don't include meshes. So if you don't include meshes, you'll see the textures as well. So we just want to see just the meshes. So we'll navigate, include meshes, make sure this is checked. And press on Control G if you don't want to see that weird specular highlight, I think it is. Okay, now we're going to use the page up and page down command, uh, buttons to navigate. So page down goes to the next uh, model or texture and page up goes to the previous uh, model or texture. So I'm just going to press Control T to tag a mesh. So this will mark a mesh as something that I want to keep on the screen. So Control and the T, okay, Control T. So that will mark it. And so as you can see, I've kept um, her head on the screen and I'm using page down right here to go to the next meshes and see uh, if there's anything I want uh, from here. So I'm just trying to, um, I should also say uh, before I do anything else, um, one second, so I'll just, uh, I'll just close this for a second. I should also say that you should have an idea in mind of what you want to get first. So you want you should have a screenshot of what you want to get, the cosmetic. So I have, uh, where is Kate? God, uh, where is it? Kate. Okay, yeah. So as you can see here, um, this is kind of the cosmetic that I'm aiming for, but with the uh, Stargazer outfit instead. So just make sure to have this on screen as a reference and that will make your time much easier because you'll you'll know what to find you're trying to look for in a new model. So I'm looking for this, so this hair, so I'll press Control T to mark it. And I'm using the page down, page up again, if you remember. So I'm just going to find some of the next textures that I want. Okay, I'm just using page down to navigate. So yes, so I want this as well. So I want these, this set of pants. And now I'm just looking for torsos. So I'm just pressing page down to cycle and yeah, so this is the the, uh, the torso that I want, and I think that's about it. So that's everything that I want here. So I just wanna to press Tools, Export Current Object. And now I'm just gonna make a new folder, and I suggest you do this too, because uh, it's much cleaner if you make a new folder for each uh, 3D model that you export. So I'm just gonna call this uh, Kate American Dreamer uh, Plugin Tutorial. And I'm just gonna select folder and I'm gonna press okay. So everything, all these uh, default settings are okay. Okay, so then from there, everything's opened. So I suggest you keep your model open in case you need anything else. Okay, so now we're just gonna open a new Blender file and we're gonna start importing everything. And yeah, I do realize there's a lot of plugins here, but um, it does make your life a lot easier. So we've got this new, uh, blender file here and I'm just going to press A to select everything and I'm going to press X to delete everything and I'm going to click on delete because we don't need any of this uh, default stuff. Now I'm going to press, oh wait, N and I should probably also enable uh, screencast keys, sorry, <laughs> one second. I will just enable screencast keys. Um, I should have done this before. Uh, there it is. Okay, whoops, okay, yep, okay, that's better. Um, yep, so I'm just gonna press N to open up this menu here. So, and I'm going to go to PSK PSA. So this uh, Blender add-on here, and I'm in the panel there, and I'm just gonna click on Mesh. Make sure Mesh and, re and Reorient Bones is checked as well. So yep, yeah, so I have, I'm on the Mesh setting, and I'm gonna click on import PSK. From here, I'm just going to navigate to wherever I exported uh, that those uh, th those uh, files from new model. So I'm going to go inside the Kate American Dreamer plugin tutorial game, uh, characters, campus, uh, Guam, models. And I'm just going to go to the head and I'm going to grab the head first. 
Yeah, so I've grabbed the head and I'm just zooming in. So how do we navigate in Blender again? A quick review. So we use the middle mouse button, just clicking down on it to rotate. Click down means rotate. Okay, now middle mouse button plus shift means to pan. And middle mouse button plus control means to zoom in or out. So if you just review that a few times, uh, you'll, you'll be able to navigate around the, the Blender uh, viewport very easily. So I'm just gonna use the control, shift to zoom in, uh, middle mouse button, and yeah, we're just gonna move around a little bit. And then I'm just going to import PSK again, and I'm going to grab the hair again, and I'm gonna go back, and I'm going to go back to the legs, and I'm going to go back and I'm gonna import also the torso. It may be a good idea also to um, import PSK as in like when you're in this menu here. So just go to the Kate folder. I'm in the Guam folder, which is the Kate folder. I'm gonna press plus to add a bookmark so you can navigate here very quickly. Anyway, that's all good. So from here, I'm just going to uh, do one more thing. So just keep U model open as a Good, pr good practice because we need to import something else. So as you can see, we're, we're in the Kate folder here, Guam, and we're gonna go to models and we need to export the base skeleton. This is the base skeleton here. So just go to the model folder. You should see a folder like, which says GSD skeleton ref. Skeleton ref is the key part. And just click on export here. And you also want to export it to the same place. So press okay, that's fine. And yeah. We're gonna just change this to setting of skeleton and press import PSK. So we're just gonna find that. So we're in the models folder and we're just gonna import this skeleton here. So this is the cleanest way to do it. And we're just going to uh, parent everything to the, uh, to the, to the, uh, wait, before that I do that, sorry. I just realized I made one mistake. So delete this hair first and we have to set this to all so if you have hair or accessories, make sure to set it to all and press import PSK. So hair or accessories, do it with this method, okay? So make sure that it has all. So that should import both the skeleton and the mesh. Okay, so it imports both of them together. So do that for hair and accessories. Now, what you wanna do from here is we just wanna uh, click on the outliner to find, select the, the, all the meshes for head, leg, and torso. And I just held the shift key there and I clicked down on the torso here. So I selected head, legs, and torso. And now I wanna hold the control key to uh, be able to select multiple things. And I wanna select the skeleton last. Make sure the skeleton is selected last. Hover your mouse over the 3D view inside the 3D view window and press control P and just click on with empty groups. So as you can see, what should have happened is the GSD skeleton ref, uh, everything, all the other meshes here, head, legs, and torso should be parented to the GSD skeleton ref. Okay, now we have to take care of this hair now. So we're just going to, um, what we're gonna do is we're going to add a modifier to it to make it uh, easier. So just make sure you click on the armature of the GS hair ACC01 ref. So whatever the hair uh, skeleton or armature, click on that, select it. Okay, don't select the mesh, select the armature. So the armature is the one with the person to the left of it. It's the icon, right? And then, so select the skeleton. Now what you wanna do is navigate down to this uh, object constraints tab on the right uh, column panel, panel. And then click on add object constraint, click on child of, and we're gonna target the GS, um, so just click on here, target the GSD skeleton ref, so that's the base skeleton, and you wanna click on the bone, and what we're gonna do here is just type in head. So we wanna target uh, this to the head. Okay, so we've just attached uh, it to the head bone, but why should we attach it to the head bone? So I'm just gonna uh, uh, delete that bone there. And we're just going to have a look at the skeleton. So I'm just gonna select the base skeleton here. And I'm just gonna press tab to enter edit mode, right? So from here, we can just select a few bones. 
And you'll notice that the hair is closest uh, to uh, this bone right here. Wait, joint head 01. And, and well, it's closest to maybe one of these ones, like joint eyelid down, but we know that it should be joint head 01 because if you have a look at all the lines, all the lines here are pointing towards um, this joint head 01. So the joint head 01 is the main controller and it controls every one of all these other bones which are parented to it. That's why we want to attach it because it's the closest and it's also um, the parent, I guess, of all the other bones. Okay, but let's say that we were doing this for an accessory. We need to go through the same process uh, for accessories, but it was an accessory for her hip. What we wanna do is we wanna select this other bone here. And if you can have a look at the top left-hand corner, that's where you'd find the name here, Joint Hip Roll RT01. So yeah, I would probably, if it was on the hip side here, I would probably attach it maybe to this bone or maybe one of the Joint Hip Master 01. And I would test um, which one works better because um, basically uh, you just need to test and see uh, if it uh, clips more or less and if it doesn't glitch out basically. Anyway, I'm just gonna get back to it. So I'm going to click on the hair mesh again and we're going to add that bone um, which is head because it's closest there. And then what I'm going to do is just press set inverse. And you'll notice that the hair snaps right back to uh, where it should be. Now from here, we're just going to test this animation. Oh, I test this uh, rig uh, by importing an animation. So we're just gonna go to PSK, PSA, importer. Remember, press N to open this menu again and select the base skeleton, just the base skeleton and click on import PSA. So I'm just going to, oh wait, I forgot one thing. One second, let me just open up view model again. We need to export the animations. So I'm just going to select that folder um, and 4.25 again, and we're going to grab that animation right again. So characters, uh, campers, uh, Guam, animations, right? So we're just gonna right click on this folder, this animations folder. This So every character has a separate animations folder for all the unique animations that they do. For any shared animations, especially for survivors, you'll see they'll be under the common folder, under the, like these here. So they'll be somewhere in here, like these ones here, the female anim sequences, gestures, all these different things will be under the common folder for shared animations between survivors. But we wanna look for the unique animations here and we're just gonna click on this folder, right click, export folder content. So this is gonna export all the, the U asset files there as PSAs. Uh, yeah, so we're just going to select the same folder, press okay and everything should be fine. Now, what I'm gonna do is go back to Blender here and I'm gonna select that base uh, skeleton and we're just going to import PSA to it. So I'm just gonna click on Guam animations and we're just gonna take the, um, double click on the, uh, the sit on log animation. This is the best animation because it moves the character the most. So if there's any problems, you'll probably see it here. And if we just scroll through the animation uh, on the playback timeline, uh, on the um, timeline, yeah, you can see that the hair is functioning correctly. Okay, that's great. So I'm just gonna press Control Z a couple of times until I haven't imported the animation. And we're just going to do one more thing to finish off uh, just the uh, importing of this model. So I'm just going to select all the meshes. So I'm gonna to go to the this area here, top right, uh, the, the, what do I call it? Uh, I forgot it, the outliner and I'm just gonna open up the GSD skeleton ref as well. And I'm just gonna hold the control key to, and the left, just left click uh, to select all the meshes here. Can you see how I haven't selected any of the skeletons? Not the hair skeleton, which has the um, skeleton icon or the person uh, logo icon thing, and not, not the skeleton ref. I've just selected meshes. Now, what I'm going to do is right click and shade smooth. 
as you can see here, it makes the character look smooth and it won't have that weird uh, flat look, which is <laughs> has some kind of triangles and other things. Okay, that's all good. Now, from here, our, our mesh and skeleton is correctly set up. The final thing we need to do is to do with materials. Now, materials are a pretty difficult subject, um, but just think of it as, uh, I'll just give it a small example. If I go to the materials window here on the in the right column, and I just add a base color here. Can you see how it's the, it's the appearance, I guess. It, it's how the, uh, the mesh looks. So yeah, we can just change the base color. We can also change a lot of other properties, such as how metallic it looks, how rough it looks. Um, yeah, and basically we're going to be importing the textures from Dead by Daylight to do this. Okay, so from here, we're going to be going to the Load UE Shaders tab. Remember, press N to show hide this window. And what we're gonna do is we're going to use this to make our lives much easier. And I wrote this plugin um, uh, with the help of Aaron Elkins. So thank you, Aaron Elkins. But yeah, <laughs> it does seem intimidating, but just bear with me for a second. So the first thing that you need to do, if you see this select preset and folder window here, just select a preset that you want to use. So you can select a folder first. Uh, so you can try, look at the different folders that you have. And by default, uh, the plugin will come with some default plugins, uh, default presets for shader maps. And these are made by Pit Princess, Roman Noodles, and Fruto. And they are fantastic, ready to go. So all you need to do is just select one. So I'm gonna select clothing. Okay, and I'm just going to uh, go to the next step here. So you can ignore these shader map settings here. By default, they should be correct. So do not worry. Um, we can have a look at that later if we need. Next thing is, can you see this load shader map methods? Now this is the most important thing. So you've selected a preset that you want to use, and this preset is for shader maps. So someone's gone in here, and let me just uh, make an example of what I mean by a shader map. So if I just go and I click on the hair here, um, and I go to the materials, use nodes. So what what that what I, what I mean by that is someone's gone in here and they've saved a specific uh, a specific kind of thing here. So maybe they've done something like I don't know, they've added some nodes here. I'm just going to pretend. <laughs> obviously, this isn't the correct node setup, but they've added some nodes here, and they've saved this for you to use yourself, and this will make it a lot easier. Okay, so anyway, uh, that, that's fine, but so that's how what a preset is. It's a shader map, uh, which will help you um, uh, load uh, how the material looks, I guess. So anyway, let's look at this one, this most important option here, the bottom, add shader map to all materials on selected meshes. So we're gonna add a shader map to all the materials on all the selected meshes, right? So we're going to select some meshes. So can you see how I've selected uh, several meshes? It doesn't matter if you also select the skeletons, that's fine as well. But uh, you've selected the meshes and select multiple meshes, the instruction says, and add shader maps to all the materials on sel the selected meshes. So you can see here, if I just have a look here, these, these shader maps here, they're all empty. They have nothing in them, right? So let's have a look what happens when I just select all the meshes again, and I'm just gonna put in a materials folder. So what is the materials folder anyway? So I just pressed uh, that directory to search for a directory, and I'm going to go to Guam again. And can you see how in the, materi the, in the character folder of Guam, there's a materials folder here? So that is what you wanna be looking for. Inside the character, Guam, add inside materials. This is an optional thing, but it makes uh, adding shader maps much faster. And the second thing here is select exported game folder. Can you see how there's a exclamation mark there? So the exclamation mark means this field is required. If you have it empty, I'll show you what happens. 
It says error, the required exported game folder field marked with mm, uh, exclamation mark has not been filled in. So yeah, it doesn't work. So let's put, let's put something in there. So let's go back to the Guam folder that we've been working with from the favorites and wherever we exported the games, uh, the, well, or we exported the meshes, the game meshes. Now, can you see, if you just go to the very start of where you exported it, you'll see that there's a game folder right here and this is the folder that you wanna use. So just press accept here and then all we need to do is just press, uh, press this button right here. So you can just press it and have a look at that. <laughs> it's pretty fantastic. So not only does this save a shader map here, it also, it also looks at the props.txt files to load uh, textures dynamically to um, your shader maps. So let's have a look. All these that were empty previously, these materials or shader maps were completely empty before, but now they all have something in them. And let me show you what I mean by props.txt files. So if I just go to wherever I exported um, uh, Kate and her textures and her 3D meshes, let's have a look, quick look here. And I'll just go into the game, uh, characters, uh, campus, Guam. So can you see I've went into the character folder, which is Guam, code name for Kate. And then I go into the materials folder here. So can you see how there's props.txt files? And if you have a look at these materials right here, let's have a look at this one here, M-I-G-S shirt 006. So let's have a look for that exact same name right in the materials folder. Sometimes um, it will also be above, so it might be in a common folder. For example, it might also be in the characters, campers, materials folder here, but um, we'll just look in this materials folder in, in the Guam folder, the individual character folder first. So I'll just have a look for it. And you can see there's a props.txt file with the exact same name. So if I just have a look here, it tells us the path to the textures. And this is how the plugin works. So because there is this file, which has information about the materials, I can dynamically, or this plugin can dynamically load those textures there. So let's have a look at that shader map uh, for this material here. Just to sh show you how it works, um, <laughs> so you aren't completely bewildered. So first things first is someone saved this shader map here. So have a look here, they have this, uh, Pit Princess made this fantastic shader map right here. So they did everything to make sure that, the, that your setup will work and Basically, let's have a look at some of these names here. So the GS shirt 06. So if we just look at that props.txt file here on the left hand, on the right hand side, and I just scroll towards the texture parameters. Let me just bring it back up. <laughs> um, let me just check I'm still recording. Yeah, <laughs> all good. <clears throat> so let's have a look at texture parameters, zero. And if we just move this across a little bit, you can see that it shows us the location of these textures in our folder, game characters, campus, Guam, textures, outfit 006, and it tells us a name here. That's the crucial thing about these files. They tell us what textures should be added. And crucial thing here, parameter info, name equals diffuse. So the diffuse means um, what color should it be? What color should the mesh look like? And so it tells us the purpose of this texture and where it's located. And that's how this plugin works. I'm telling you this uh, because sometimes we have to manually do this as well. Okay, so anyway, I'll have a quick look. At, let's ha have a quick look at finding this one and I'll probably move on from there, but let's have a quick look. So if we just look uh, in the same folder here. So we're looking for campus Guam textures outfit 006. So campus Guam textures outfit 006. And can we see that we have these materials right here? TGS shirt 006, TGS shirt 006N. And these were told to us by the materials, uh, by this props TXT folder. So that's how uh, the plugin works. It just checks this materials info file 
puts it into here. And yeah, that's basically it. Um, yeah, and it loads these, um, these shader maps that have already been made for you by someone else, uh, which is the fantastic part as it makes it much, much, much faster. Okay, yeah, so basically that's, um, that's it for there. And it looks all good, I think. Yeah, 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 so it looks all good, um, but we're not done yet because let's have a look at what, what preset did we load here? We loaded the Pit Princess clothing. So that doesn't really make sense, does it? So we loaded the clothing to the skin, to the hair, to everything. So that's, that's not right, right? So what we need to do here is we need to actually um, load the correct presets to the correct places. So let's just do that. So let's hide the skeleton here. So I just see the mesh now. And so I just click this eye to hide the skeleton. And now what I'll do is I will just change these, the, these to the correct ones. So right now we loaded the shading. So we uh, loaded the cloth one here. So that's fine. But this, this torso here is uh, skin. So the only thing we want to change is this third one here this MIGS Torso OO. So that's when we come to this next uh, box right here. It says add shader map to multiple materials. So let's look at the instructions. Select a mesh. Okay, I've selected this um, mesh right here uh, of just her torso. And enter material indexes se separated by a space and add shader maps to multiple materials. So what we can do here is we can just Let's have a look. So what index is this? This, this uh, first material is index zero. This second index, uh, second material slot is index one. This third material slot is index three. So what we wanna do is we just want to, oh wait, sorry. This is zero, one, and two. So we want to load to the third material slot. Remember it starts from, from it starts from uh, zero. That's why we need to have it as two. So we're just affecting this MIGS torso OO. Okay, so that's all. And then we just need to make sure that we're selected the correct preset, DBD princess, pit princess skin, because this area is just the skin, the torso OO. And what I'll do is I'll just press add shader maps to multiple materials. So uh, if we, wait, what? <laughs> okay, that's, that's better. I was about to be slightly uh, perturbed. Anyway, so if we just have a look here, if we have a quick look, um, <laughs> that isn't supposed to be there, but <laughs> you can just ignore that. But anyway, uh, but anyway, uh, so the so we'll see that this one changed to skin. So we just altered the third material slot here. These other ones are still cloth, but the third material slot is now skin which is great. So we, as you can see, we just changed the skin there to the correct preset of skin. So I'm using DVD Pit Princess's uh, presets, uh, but you can also use Roman Noodles and fr Frutos, um, which I might explain, explain at a later date as well. Okay, so the final thing here is we just need to do a few more things here. So let's also add this DVD Princess skin to perhaps this first one here, MIGS Head OO. And if you just look at the preview window of the material, you can see that it's that that's just the skin. So if you just look at the ball, little ball there, on the left-hand side of the material in the material shading window, you can see that that's just the skin area. So that's how I know that I should add the skin texture to it. So what material index is this? This is index zero, right? Because we start from zero and MIGS eyelashes is one. And what which one do we want to affect? Just uh, MIGS head OO. So we just want to affect material slot zero. So let's just add that. So click on that button, add shader maps to material, multiple materials. As you can see, we changed the skin correctly. Don't worry, it will look uh, good <laughs> quite quickly. It is a little bit pale at the moment, but do not worry. Anyway, let's go to um, the, the jeans now. So now we can see there's only one material here. That's kind of difficult but we have a solution here. So what we need to do is just press 
So select the, the mesh first and press tab to enter edit mode. What we're going to do is we're going to separate just the area which is skin from, uh, from that. And uh, actually, no, sorry. <laughs> we need to do one more thing first. Before we do that, press the plus icon to add a material slot and press the plus, press the plus icon to add a new material. And we're just going to name this skin legs, right? So we just want this material here to have the skin uh, texture to it. But um, what we're going to do here is we're just going to add the skin texture. So we're going to go to DVD Pit Princess Skin and we're going to add it to the clothing and the skin together first. So we're just adding it to material slot one, MIGS legs 01, right? So we're just going to add th this, but we're going to have to go to the shading tab again. And if we just copy everything here by pressing, uh, by just, if you just click in the empty space, press A, and while you have your mouse in the shader editor, right click, copy, and go to skin legs. Now we just want to press A and press delete and press control V to paste. So you're just pasting uh, what our skin material was into the skin legs, <clears throat> which is great. Um, now what we want to do is we want to change this GS legs here. So this GS legs will just be for the pants. So we're just going to change this one here of material slot one back to pants. So we're going to go DVD Pit Princess clothing and just add shader maps to multiple materials. So we just added it to shaders, shade, uh, the material slot one, oh sorry, material slot zero, I guess. And all we need to do now is just apply this skin legs material, right, to the mesh. So let's select the mesh, press tab to go to edit mode. And what we're going to do is, you can just click in empty space to deselect everything. So click in the 3D view in empty space to deselect everything. Then click on somewhere which you know is skin, right? So I've just clicked on the leg right here and hover your mouse over another area which is also in the skin uh, texture. So another vertex which is in the skin and press L. So that will select the linked uh, vertices. Now, so you should have selected the whole leg but we're going to hold the shift key here and select another area which we know is also skin and hover your cursor over an area which is also skin here. So uh, anywhere else, so just press L and as you can see here, we have now selected both of those legs really easily. And now what we're going to do is make sure skin legs is highlighted as the active material and press assign. So can you see how it turned, it turned um, white, that's because we've applied the correct material to the correct area, which is absolutely fantastic. So that is really good. We're progressing very nicely and we're going to do the final thing, which is just fix up this hair because this hair, let's see what it has applied to it. It has the clothing preset applied to it by DVD uh, Pit Princess. Uh, Pit Princess. So um, what we're going to do is we need to fix that. So let's select which preset do we want to apply? DVD Pit Princess hair. Let's scroll down again. And what we're going to do is we can just add shader maps to all selected meshes because we've only selected the hair. And we know that the hair material is the only material over here. So I'm just going to click add shader maps to all selected meshes. And uh, yeah, so don't worry about this. There is an error here. So the problem here is if we just have a quick look for this hair material, so if we just have a look for this hair material, I'll just help you out because I know uh, this one's a slight bug. Well, it's not a bug. It's a, <laughs> it's a feature, I guess. Um, let's go to the game, back to the game folder and let's search. Let's search for the same material name. So what I did is I just double clicked here to highlight that name, press control C to copy it. And I just pressed control V in the uh, search, uh, search bar and I pressed enter. Yep, so let's open up that props.txt file. So let's try to puzzle this out together. So the problem here is we have an ID texture and a BCO2 texture. So, so these ones, the ID, 
is, I guess, it's for the base color. Uh, it, it can be for the base color, and the BCO2 is also for the base color. So what's happening is the textures are overlapping. So we're, what we're doing is we're putting the ID in first, or we're putting the BCO2 uh, texture in first, then we're in that same image texture node. So let's have a look at which image texture node I'm talking about. I'm talking about this one here. Um, so we put in the BCO2 first, but then we put in the ID second. So we're overlapping it, if you can see what I mean. So the one that really should be there is this one right here, the BCO2 uh, node, um, uh, image texture. But let's have a look which one's in here, ID. So what we can do here is, yes, you can fix it manually by just pressing the open folder. But another thing I suggest you try is if we just select this mesh again and we change this one right here, overlapping textures priority. And I'm gonna change this from last to first. And this is what you should try first if your, your material isn't working as you think it should. So just change this right here. And uh, then we will just um, press uh, add shader maps to all selected meshes. Yep, and now the hair is working correctly. Okay, so, yep, that's great. Now what we need to do is, there's one more thing. So while this is good for the standard Kate um, kind of thing, we aren't actually looking for that. What we're looking for is we're looking for the, we're looking for the, uh, Stargazer Kate. So the American Dreamer, uh, I guess, uh, cancel, uh, not this one. Yeah, so we're looking for something slightly different. So if I just look at the preview, let's have a look what's, what's different. So which one are we looking for? Can you see how the hair color and the face color and even the leg color, you might not notice it, but the leg color is actually slightly different. So we actually need to change that but we can't rely on the plugin to do this. We need to do this manually. So let us do that. So in new model, uh, let us go to the textures folder. So can you see how I've gone to the Guam folder? Characters camp is Guam. And in the textures folder, so you can, you wanna have to export some of the textures manually because some of the meshes uh, don't come with props TXT files that will automatically do it. So you have to do it manually. So what you would have to do here is you would right click on a folder, click on open folder content. So make sure that this include meshes box is not checked, not checked. So it should be unchecked right here. From there, you can press page down to cycle through all the textures uh, right here. So yeah, so you can just cycle through all the textures there. Um, then you would find like which outfit, um, uh, you would find which outfit uh, what you want is in. So I'm looking for this kind of uh, eerie kind of sci-fi kind of thing. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to isolate some things that I know would be a real giveaway that I'm on the Stargazer outfit. So I'm going to, outf I'm going to uh, isolate the heads, right? So I'm just going to type in the filters, heads. So is this one the one I'm looking for? No, I don't think so. So I'm just going to go along, but I'm not gonna pretend anymore. I know, it's, I know it's from this folder. So from doing this file before, I know it's in the 0106, outfit 0106 folder. Cause you can see how this one is what we're looking for. So without further ado, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on this folder here. I know that I need every texture here. I'm gonna right click and I'm click, gonna click export folder content to export all these textures manually. And I'm just gonna press okay here. Yep, and that should be good. Um, yep, okay, uh, that's all good. Now what we're going to do is I'm just gonna go back to the blend file we were working on and I'm gonna fix just those specific ones. So I'm just gonna click on the hair here. So this is one thing that I need to change here. So I'm just gonna check in where we exported it. So I'm gonna to go to the text, oh, whoops. I'm gonna to go to the game, characters, campers, uh, textures, uh, whoops, not this one. <laughs> Guam, textures, outfit 0106, right? So these are the ones that I need to add to our shader map. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at the hair one. So right now I'm texturing the hair. How can I tell? I just look at the material name on the right-hand side panel. 
So it says CMM hair. Cool. So I'm just going to type in hair right here. So these are the ones that we need to replace. Why is this not working? <laughs> that is funny. Oh yes, sorry. <laughs> the hair is actually in a different folder. I completely forgot. So the hair um, is actually in a different folder. Uh, so the hair is actually in this folder right here. So it is in 01 here. So if I just look at hair, I'm looking for the red hair. Whoops, it's not this one. So it should be hopefully one of these. O -O hair. So I'm looking for hair 06. No, not this one. Um, which one is it? There should be some red hair somewhere around here somewhere, if I can find it. So I, I have the filter on with hair. I'm just going to look around for hair base colors. Um, not sure why I didn't export that. I'm pretty sure I should have exported that, but um, let's just click on it again and click export and just say, okay, and just make sure that it's exported. Okay, so it's right here, Never mind. So we'll look for hair again. Oh yes, I know why, because um, I should be looking for star hair. Yeah, okay, so look up star hair instead. So I had it already, ex I had already exported it, but yeah, so what we wanna do is we just wanna drag this one in from your folder and just press delete here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace this one here with this diffuse texture here with the, the base color. Uh, yeah, so as you can see, the hair is looking nice. So that is good. And that's all we need to replace here because we can see here, that's the only hair texture from our folder that we need to replace for this outfit. However, let's have a look at the different ones now. Let's have a look at the face. So we'll select the face. And what I'll do is I'll go to the shading tab and I will click on, I will just search up in my outfit 006 folder, 0106 folder, where I know everything is. I will search up, um, uh, so what material am I texturing? I'm texturing the head. So I'll, so I'll search star head. And yep, so these two are the ones that I need to replace. So which one's the BC? BC is diffuse, so I'll just drag it in. And also this ORM here, I'll drag it in as well. So I'll just delete this BC. I'll put it in here. Wait one second, actually. Uh, yeah, okay, yep. I'll delete this BC. I'll put this one in and I'll put, connect it to diffuse. And this ORM here, notice something very special. It is non-color. So make sure the new one is also non-color. So you delete that one, put this one in and let's just put it into there and make sure it's on non-color. Otherwise it will look very weird. And yeah, that's all good. And, oh, whoops, is there anything else? No, there is not. So we just leave everything else for this outfit and let's uh, click on the legs as the final part. So the legs are the final part we need to replace and let's have a look for that. So let's go search up in this uh, outfit folder, this textures folder, uh, leg. So star leg, and let's just replace these ones. So we need to replace B, C, O, uh, N, and O, R, M. So we need to replace all three here. So I'm just going to delete this B, C, delete that, put this one in, I put that one into the diffuse, and then let's put in the O, R, M, and N. So the N and the O, R, M, remember the non-color setting. So as you can see, the ones that, that were previously there had non-color, so we have to make sure that these ones are non-color. This is because ORM and N, what they are is they are black and white information. So they're just information. They should be on the setting of non-color. If it's actually trying to give color texture, like the base color, uh, it should be on sRGB. But everything else, pretty much 90% of the time, it is non-color, so yeah. Okay, so that is completely fine here. So we have changed both the head and the hair and the legs. So uh, that's actually looking really good. So the final thing we have to do here is, uh, is this part here. Can you, see, can you see this, there's this solo thing. So we, let's just close everything. So we're just gonna close and look these triangles and we can use this solo material so it is easier to adjust. So what happens here is we're just going to select a material and we click. We can click uh, solo active material. 
So this will just solo that material. It will uh, make sure that this one's the only visible material first, so we can adjust it a little bit. Because while these are good, what we should do is we should adjust them a little bit. Um, one second, sorry. I will just <laughs> look up one thing. Uh, <laughs> I will look up uh, one thing in the documentation, which is just... Um, okay, so yeah, so if we just look up here, using Pit Princess, Princess's presets, um, for the cloth shader, soft, softness is meant for soft fabrics like cotton, hardness is meant for leather or rubber, fuzziness is meant for things like silk. Um, translucency is anything that's supposed to be th really thin. So uh, for this one right here, um, all we're gonna do is we're just going to uh, open this one here. So we're just gonna make it a little bit wider and we're just gonna adjust these settings a little bit right here. So we're just going to adjust it until it looks right uh, to our eyes. So I'm just going to adjust the softness, hardness. So its softness is for uh, soft, Fabric, so we're just gonna up that softness a little bit and see if that's okay. I think that around this, I'm just doing this by eye and that seems okay. Yep, so I'd say that's okay. Um, we can adjust the fuzziness and whatever. So fuzziness is, is meant for things like silk. So this isn't really silk, so we can bring the, uh, we can bring that down a little bit perhaps. And this is what you wanna do with every one of them. Okay, so just to pretend, I'm gonna pretend I'm done here. I'm gonna press use nodes for all materials on active mesh. So as you can see, we can now see everything again. So let's also solo this, um, this torso, if we can adjust anything here. Um, actually, we don't need to adjust anything here. <laughs> yeah, so this is fine. So we'll just use nodes for all materials on active mesh to see everything again. And we're just going to adjust one more thing, which is just the pants. So I'm just going to, Adjust, so I'm just gonna press solar active material so we can see just the pants and the um, the legs, uh, the shoes. So this is the workflow that you wanna go into. So you want to adjust things. So let's have a look at those pants and let us just adjust a few settings. So again, uh, softness is meant for th soft things like fabric. So is this really that soft? No, so let us turn it down actually. And um, is it fuzzy? So fuzziness is meant for things like silk. So we can just turn it down a little bit as well. Yeah, so this is up to you. If it looks okay by eye, it should be okay. And yeah, I think we'll just say that's done. I'll say use nodes for active mesh. And let's just change this one here. So let's solo the hair. <laughs> it doesn't even matter here. But anyway, because that's the only one on this active on this mesh. So let us go to shading and let us have a look at just the hair section. We can edit that. This will look much better later. So if we just gradient texture. So we can adjust this a little bit. I won't do too much adjusting, but you get the idea. Okay, that's all done. So that's the entire workflow. And now all we need to do is just set up some lights and we are finished. So let us do that. So I'm gonna add in some lights and I'm gonna add in a camera. So let me just add in the light here. I'll add in the camera. And what I'll do is when I select this camera, I'm gonna press N, I'm gonna press uh, uh, item, oh wait, uh, view, and I'm gonna say camera to view. And what I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna press, when I select this camera here, I'm going to just uh, press numpad one to go to front view. I wanna use the middle mouse button just to move a little bit. And then I can, when I have the camera selected, I'm gonna press Control, Alt, Numpad, Zero. As you can see there, that moves the, the camera location exactly to um, your, your camera, your Blender View camera is. So it moves it exactly there. Now I'm just gonna change this, um, I wanna change this aspect ratio right here, this resolution. So I'm gonna to go to the render settings, go here. I'm gonna go change this to 1920 as well. So it's a little bit more square. And yeah, we can just zoom right in a little bit. I'm gonna change, I'm gonna to go to the camera and I'm gonna change the perspective. I'm gonna, usually I like to use a very uh, a very a large uh, focal length. This makes the background much better as well. Um, it, it seems it makes the background seem much closer, I should say. 
And yeah, I think that's a good view of it. We'll also go to this uh, engines tab right here. I'm gonna select cycles. And yeah, that should be all good. So we're just gonna press N and I'm gonna uncheck the box which says camera to view. So this means that moving your camera right now will no longer change uh, the, the, view, the view in the actual camera. So yeah, that looks fine to me. I wanna change this to GPU compute as well because GPU is generally faster if you have a good uh, graphics card. And now we're just gonna take charge of the lighting. So I'm just gonna to go to the top left-hand corner right here. I'm gonna hover over that corner right there. I'm gonna click and hold down, hold down on that, and I'm just gonna drag to open a new window. Now, from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to change this to um, normal mode right here. <laughs> so this thing right here. And <laughs> I think this base color is, I don't know why this base color is still purple. <laughs> Doesn't matter. It shouldn't be purple anymore, but that's fine. <laughs> I maybe shouldn't have changed it at the start, but it doesn't matter. Um, we're gonna use this left-hand window to adjust the lights. And this one right here, I'm gonna to go to numpad zero again to get up close and personal and change it to um, this one right here. Oh yeah, before I forget, I do want to do one thing. So I wanna to go to the compositing tab. I wanna click on use nodes right here. And I do want to, what I generally like to do is before I do any lighting, I will just, uh, take off this image right here. I'm just going to add in a, uh, an environment. And then, wait, is it even here? Environments, where are you? Am I in the wrong place? I'm in the wrong place. Whoops, not in the compositing tab. So just press Control Z a couple of times. We did not need to do that. Go to the shading tab and change this ob object here to world. Now, what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna add a, so just say Shift A to search, uh, to add a new thing, and we're gonna go environment texture. Yep, so we're just gonna add an HDRI. So an HDRI is a fantastic tool for lighting, realistic outside lighting. So um, it's not as good if you're looking for in indoor lighting, but it's still fantastic. So where do I get my HDRIs? Just search up HDRI Haven. This is a place for 100% free uh, Creative Commons Zero uh, things. So what I just do is I generally like to go here, I will browse the 200 HDRIs and I will look for probably an indoor scene or, or in this case, I think I selected a night scene. Anyway, um, I selected like one of these, I think. I think I selected this one actually. And what I did is I just clicked on here to download. 4K is already fine. So I think 4K is fine for most purposes because we won't be seeing much of it. Uh, we won't be using it much of it in our scene, but I downloaded that somewhere here, so I downloaded that in my uh, Blender projects inside my HDRIs, I used that. Yeah, so that's how you would do that. And and before we add these lights, so I'll just delete these lights right here. And I'll just show you what it looks like. So this could be your final render already. You could just say, I'm happy with this. I'm happy with how it looks. And uh, yeah, that, that's fine, that's fine by me. And if that's what you want, that's okay. We can make a couple of adjustments to this. So let me just go to the shading tab and let me go to uh, cycles. Wait, sorry, the 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 um, render view, the viewport rendering. Oh, not viewport, the render viewport. <laughs> I don't know what it's called. Okay, let me just close this as well, just to give myself some more space. Whoops, I did not do that in the right way. Uh, it doesn't matter. So yeah, this looks okay. And what we can do is we can increase the strength of this if we wanna see it to be a little bit brighter. We can just say 1.5, yeah, this looks okay. And it's really realistic lighting. However, the key is it's realistic lighting doesn't mean it looks good, okay? So generally, I don't really like to do this. Uh, there's another thing you can do is you can add a mapping. Is this, is this the correct node? Uh, gosh, which what was it again? UV map? No, it was not. Um, <laughs> Map, uh, brr. yeah, you can add a mapping node in between. Um, no, it wasn't this one. There's another. There's a no, another node where, where you can use it to rotate it, rotate the HRI around. Rotation. So you can just drag these values over here, and you can see it's beginning to rotate. I'll do it some more. We can actually rotate it on this axis or on this axis. 
Uh, but anyway, um, for our cases, we don't really need it um, because I'm not really going to be using uh, this one as the full lighting because I because it's realistic lighting doesn't mean it looks like 100% good. But if you want to render, you can just render here. So you can just render render image, and if that's your final product, fantastic. Um, however, what I want to do is I will just go back to that shading tab, and I will change this strength to something really low, to maybe like something 0 0.3 or something. Yeah, that looks okay. So this has some really low lighting, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to um, the camera here, I'm gonna to go to film, I'm gonna to go to transparent, so I don't see that background. Yep, so that's fantastic, um, but we just want to change this lighting around. Now is where we manually adjust uh, everything. So I'll just go back, pull open this window, and let's go shift A, create some new lights. So let's create some area lights. Area lights give you the most control, I believe, and um, we're just gonna move it a few lights. So I'm just gonna move this one to the side, maybe a little bit up, but we'll just move it. So we'll just move the camera around with the uh, middle mouse button and we'll just move it around a little bit. Yeah, that looks good. And I'll just rotate this. So I'll press R and Z, wait, whoops, R and X, no, R and Y. So yeah, okay, so I'm just gonna point it like a little bit over the character and that's fine by me. I'll just change this light setting up a little bit. So as we can see here, um, we, we were producing some light and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna change the size a little bit up because what does the size do? And what does this, this other stuff do, does? Um, well, Blender Guru has a fantastic tutorial on this, but basically size uh, means like, size emphasizes beauty. And it's generally used uh, for female photography um, to make the skin look very soft and to eliminate those pores. Uh, but um, in our cases, yeah, we, we can use it kind of like this. Now I'm just going to add a few more cameras Oh wait, sorry, a few more lights. So we've had, had this, uh, so we can press numpad zero here to see how does it look. Yeah, it looks okay. Um, also the distance, so the distance, I can reduce the distance here to reduce the amount of light that gets on it. And, but I can increase the uh, lighting just a little bit more. Uh, I think this is a little bit too dim, but we can adjust it gradually. Anyway, we'll press shift A, add another light, or we'll add a, an area, another area light. What I'll do here is I'll just add it right behind. I've also changed that uh, this, this, this light type to disc. Um, to be honest, you can't really see the difference um, unless you have a very reflective surface. So uh, it doesn't really matter if you use disc or other. So I'm just gonna create a backlight here. I'm gonna create a few different light sources. I'm gonna make this a little bit brighter, I feel. Maybe reduce the size a little bit. I wanna see some really dramatic kind of lighting. So I just wanna see like the left side of her face, just a little bit bright. And I can tell it's currently underexposed. So anyway, that's fine. And let me just rotate RZ, or whoops, RX, to rotate it towards uh, Kate. Yeah, and that's fine. So as we can see, it's on a little bit, it's on a little bit of an angle here. So, Actually it isn't, but our, our Z will make it a little bit on, on an angle because we want to have this one as the backlighting. So we wanna make this really, really bright. And what you'll start to see is you'll start to see there will be a line, there'll kind of be a, a, a line here separating Kate from the background. So if I can actually get that. <laughs> so a thousand, yeah, okay, that's kind of working, kind of-ish. I uh, might need to, Rotate it to Z and move it a little bit more. Okay, yep, so R, Z even more. So if you just rotate it around the side a little bit more, you'll get more of that uh, lighting effect, R, Z. Maybe just move it a little bit this way. Okay, so as we can see, that's a little bit more extreme. I don't want it so extreme, so I'm just gonna move it back a little bit. And I'm gonna go R, Z and maybe something like that. That should be okay. So you can see um, I have a little bit of a uh, a cutting, cutting Kate out from the background. As you can see, it cuts out her left side quite nicely. And what we're going to do here is I want to do one more thing. So I want to go Shift D. So I, I Shift D. I press Shift D to duplicate that light right here. I'm going to go R Z to rotate it back like it's straight. And I'm going to put this right behind her hair. And you can see what effect that it will do. 
it will make her hair look uh, fantastic. So just going through her hair and we can see it has that kind of effect, which is really nice. So it makes her hair really, uh, the color kind of stand out. And what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna brighten this up a little bit on the left-hand side because it's not really bright enough. And don't, don't fear shadow, <laughs> as Blender Guru says, um, shadow is your friend. You still wanna be creating some good shadow. Um, so, but make sure that your subject is still not underexposed. So I have some nice shadow on the right-hand side and I think that should be okay. It's pretty much on par with uh, what I did in my other render. If you have a look here, this is what I did in my other render. Oh yes, I forgot one setting. If you go to your camera, you should uh, go to, uh, where is it, a render, and just go to post-process, uh, where was it? Um, where is it? Okay, it was color management. Color management and change this uh, look. So change, make sure it's on filmic, but also change this look here to high contrast. And this will make your renders just pop out like that, right? So yeah, okay. Maybe I'll just reduce that light a little bit. That light's a little bit intense. <laughs> but I'll just reduce the power of that light here uh, in this window or adjust it back. Yeah, and I think that looks pretty good. Another small thing is just for this hair here, I'm just going to, so if you think the hair looks a little bit ladder-like, so it has a little bit of a uh, geometric kind of thing, um, I'll show you what I mean by a full render. So I did some previous renders like this, and let me just go to here. So I'll just show you, I'll show you a few examples. So, so this was okay. So if we just look right here, can you see how the squares, um, they have this square lighting? So that's because, you haven't added the subdivision surface. And the subdivision surface will make the hair very nice and sleek instead. So if you feel like you're seeing that square thing all over your hair, what you wanna do is the following. So you just want to click on your hair, hair mesh, and what you wanna do is just go to the modifiers tab, add modifier, subdivision surface. Yep, so, yep, and just make sure in levels viewport it's two, and in render it's two as well. And that will be fantastic. That will make sure that your hair doesn't have those square artifacts and is right, is very good. Um, okay, I'm, think, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking that's pretty much it. So I think we'll just add a pose to this. So I might as well also just add, so select, so hold the shift key to select everything here, like also the meshes as well and press M to move that to a separate collection, I'll call this Kate, uh, American Dreamer. And what I'll do is I'll just, let me, am I recording? <laughs> just making sure I'm recording, all good. And yeah, that's fine. What we need to do here is we just need to, so we have the cameras there, that's fine. We have the light. Yes, I'll just add a pose to her. Yep, so I'll just, click on this base skeleton uh, right here. So you can click it in the outline as well, which might make it easier. Press N in probably in this window here. So press N, select the base skeleton in the outliner, in the liner. And then we're just going to uh, go to PSK. And I'm just gonna import just some random animation. Maybe this one here, idle menu animation. Yep, and we can see that she looks kind of like that. That's okay, so I'll just hide her skeleton again so we don't have to see it because it's kind of annoying uh, just for the purposes of preview. And yeah, so we can see that she kind of looks like this. Yeah, so she looks kind of like that. That's, that's fine by me. So I'll just leave her in this pose, that, that's fine. And I will just render this out Okay, so yeah, so I'll just render this, I'll just enable two things. I'll enable the denoising data and I'll enable ambient occlusion. Just for the ambient occlusion here, we wanna to go to the ambient occlusion tab, where is it? So in the render settings, there should be ambient occlusion somewhere here. Okay, ambient occlusion should be right Oh gosh, where is it? 
Where is ambient occlusion? This one, I'm trying to find it. Um, ambient occlusion. Ambient occlusion, where are you? Where is ambient occlusion? I legitimately cannot find it. Oh, there it is. So it's under the world settings. So ambient, so don't enable ambient occlusion. Just make sure that the distance is not 10. So 10 meters is very, it's very large and it's meant for like city blocks or something. What we want to do is just adjust this to something like 0 0.7 or 0 0.7 and you don't need to enable it. You don't need to build it into the render. We're going to add it next. Okay, so just make sure denoising data and AO ambient occlusion is checked and we are absolutely finally uh, done. So I'm just gonna uh, press Control S. Well, I don't really need to save. I doesn't. Really, oh, I'll save it. I'll save it. I'll save it. Just save often, guys. So I'm just going to save this as Kate American Dreamer plugin tutorial. And what I'll do here is I'll just render this out now. So I will just press render, and I'll render image, and we'll just wait until it's all done. So, yep, so as you can see, what we did is we just, we did the lighting and everything. So we had the HDR, uh, HDRI as the uh, background, I guess, as the base lighting. And then I added extra lighting on top of that. And yeah, so it just creates this fantastic result. I know that you don't need to use the HDRI if you're just using lighting by yourself, but I think it's like a nice base and um, kind of helps it out. But yeah. So it will just denoise here. We have to do just one more step, which is just the compositing step, but that will be pretty easy. Uh, so do not worry. Also, you can adjust the uh, sample size, um, the sample uh, being the samples being here. So right now it's 128 for renders, um, which I'm okay with. Yep. So another small thing that I probably should tell you is um, just for so these ones are okay, but uh, basically, um, this is what happens if you do not put the the your character to non-color. Can you see how the this face is kind of shiny, and this one doesn't have that problem? That is because the ORM image textures are non-color, are correctly non-color. So just make sure that if you just go to your shading, go back to object, and and if you click if you click your characters, make sure that they are. Uh, they have ORM, which is non-color. Yep, okay, so it's it's all done now. So what we're going to do is we're just going to, so we're not gonna save it just yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the compositing tab and we're just going to do this last bit. Um, so I'm just gonna click on use nodes. So I went to the compositing tab, I went use nodes, and here's where we just need to do one thing. So just go to edit, preferences, add-ons, and just make sure, search up node wrangler, and make sure Node Wrangler is enabled uh, for this next part. But anyway, all we need to do is just search up um, the denoise node. So Shift A, what I did it was Shift A to add a node. I clicked on it and then I searched up denoise. So this is the best way to do it. So just go, so connect uh, denoising normal to normal, denoising de image to image, and denoising albedo to albedo. And what we need to do here is we would just connect this one to image. So this is just the denoising part, and this is Intel's denoising node, I believe. And what we want to do is we also want to add in the uh, AO, so the ambient occlusion, so that will add in the shadow. So before I do that, so because I have the Node Wrangler plugin enabled, I can just press Control, Shift, left mouse button, and as you can see, I can see what the, the ambient occlusion looks like. It actually looks like that. So if we press in the, um, so we can see how it adds shadow. It adds shadow to um, all the locations there. So this it will add shadow back into the lighting. And so it'll make the character look better. So that's how it'll look. And what we're going to do is we're just going to adjust how it, we're gonna add that to the image. So I'm just going to uh, add in a mix node. So shift A, and then I did a mix node, turn this to multiply. So it just uses the black information here. And then I'm just going to put this uh, this AO into the second image uh, input there, and this one into the first image input. 
And what we're going to do is I'm just going to uh, connect this one up here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go change this one to a to a image editor. I'm going to click on just the render result. So as we can see here, the best option usually is like 0 0.404 is generally <laughs> 0 0.4 ah, 404 is generally the best option. So we can see like what is the effect of it. Can you see how it noticeably darkened? So first of all, we denoise the image, which is just from this denoise uh, de uh, thing right here. Then we just added in this multiply. So let's have a look what happens when it looks like at one. So, so if we just have a look here, it's much, much darker. But so that's why generally it's okay, uh, the best result is roughly around 0.404. You can adjust, you can adjust it manually yourself. And that is pretty much it. So from here, what we can do is we can just go image, save as. So you'll want to do this if you if you are just rendering a single image. We're going to go save it wherever we want. So I'll just call this uh, Kate uh, plugin tutorial uh, render. And yeah, so that's the lowdown on how to do it and how to use the plugin, um, how to, or the basics on how to use the plugin. And basically, let's just have a look at this finished result. And yes, it looks fantastic. So the hair just looks brilliant. The skin, the the uh, clothing, everything is pretty much on point. And that's basically how to do it. So thank you very much uh, for being here. You are my lifeblood. Anime Nyan, out.